I had always wanted to sit with her because she was the first PI female judge sitting on the bench serving our community. She's been very visionary and it's also been quite difficult being a woman, but uh, my Lucy by name, my Lucy by nature. Um, Ida Malosi. I was the first Pacifica woman judge and I was appointed in 2002. To this day it's still a really uncomfortable feeling when they tell everyone to stand for you. That's the moment where you appreciate in a crystal clear way that it's all on you. You don't stand there um, as a proud man, uh, that you're not proud of what occurred, but you can be proud of what you've done to put it right. And I don't expect that we're going to see you back in court again. You're free to go, thank you. My parents were the amongst the first, if not the first, uh, Pacifica people in the South. And it's the classic story, everybody knows it. One sibling married a Balangi woman from Invercargill, uh, followed by the next sibling and the next sibling, and so my mother followed. I came by the Matua as a ship. It was hard, very hard. I don't know where, who I turned to. I got to Brothers, I don't know how to talk to, you know, what I want. I remember I often write to my mum, I got no pillowcases, things like that. But after I stand on my feet and be a good citizen and work and think the way our father taught us. It still stuns me, so full of pride and admiration that my mother knew how to get a mortgage. I mean, who does that? Come all the way from Samoa and can go down to the Southland Savings Bank and work out how to get a mortgage. I only ever remember two homes in my childhood. Uh, both of those were owned by my parents. <laughs> We had South Auckland, South Parents, second house. So we have uh, three children. Our eldest just about to graduate from Victoria University. Our daughter Sina is doing law at AUT University and our youngest is first year at Victoria. All the family come together, but it's my sister's 21st tonight and all the first cousins and aunties and stuff. So it's good to have them here. I'm studying criminology and education. <laughs> he's not yet decided what he's doing, which is code for his first year university <laughs> in a hostel. Oh yeah, we just came to find him. He wants to look at you anyway. Well, we're trying to get ready. Birthday girls are uh, not open to being rushed. At 6.30, we should be there at 7, but it's all good. Let's get crazy. Huge.
huge key for me has been my girlfriends, just an amazing circle of women. Those were crazy, amazing times with my two best friends who remain that uh, to this day, Laverne King and Sandra Lofiwai. Um, three brown girls with not one clue between them how to run a business. Um, turning up to the bank manager at the BNZ in Onuhunga in our painting clothes, uh, asking for an overdraft. We set up and practiced in a building that was actually condemned, you know, had rats running around it. We uh, set up a daycare at our um, firm in Otahu. Our husbands um, painted a rainbow on the wall. We used to have jolly jumpers, those things that you hang in the doorways on every door, and these kids just bouncing up and down. We had breast pumps, and we used to run up from the Otahu Court to the ASB Bank, and we were upstairs. Pump some milk, put it in the fridge and label it so the right baby got the right milk, and ran back down to court and we had beds for our husbands who came in during the day and slept there and looked after the kids and three bars lined up. They were great, they were great times and our staff were just brilliant. There were babies everywhere. On the way, we've always been blessed with people who saw something in us, but the biggest break came from the Māori Women's Welfare League. Maybe 30 years ago, where we turned up to a hotel in Mangere on Massey Road and left with a cheque for $20,000. Can you imagine what a vote of confidence that was in us? To my dying day, we'll uh, keep repaying in terms of um, the issues for Māori. So that was actually a defining moment in my life to have that backing from Tangata Whenua for those women. Um, to say there and then, yes, we believe in you, we believe in your vision, and we trust you. So that stayed with me forever. Yeah, when I go out to call that one, I'll make sure that Claiming my space mostly has not been a difficult thing because I think I've always been clear about who I am, what I stand for, who I stand for. out of uh, the Rangatahi court movement, if you like. Um, I would not have survived this job without the support of my Māori brothers and sisters. I am and our people are indebted for them for making sure there was always room for me and us on their waka. So there's no doubt that that um, paved the way for the Pacifica Youth Court. In my um, nine years as a youth advocate, she's been an absolute pleasure to represent Mum. And I think a lot of credit goes to her sister and brother-in-law. They're a young couple with their own child and they've really stepped up Mum. And um, they've taken uh, under their wing they're undertaking a parenting program. Then I'm not thinking about it because she was getting into a lot of trouble and they just took her and grabbed her and said, we'll take it, we'll get this sorted. I just wanted to thank her for letting me help her and not yeah. giving up on me. Because a lot of my friends, all their younger siblings gave up. Final words to you. What do you want to say to people today? Thank you for supporting. Um, <coughs> and thank you for being here. Um, yeah. I am going to discharge you under section 282. That means you have no criminal record. You're not going to land. You're free to start over. Thank you. I think people are surprised by the level of emotion that often occurs in this court. 
uh, typically at the discharge stage because young people and their families um, are so proud of the journey that they've had and uh, unaccustomed to people saying such uh, positive things about them. So there's often a sense of our young people and their families being overwhelmed by all the positive attention. And that's sad, actually, that our people are not used to the um, affirmation, they're not used to achieving, they're not used to having goals set for them that they, they actually achieve. So there was a lot of emotion going on in that case. And not just for uh, the young person and their family, but also for the professionals involved. So it's a process that everyone buys into um, and everyone fully commits to. And that's what makes it work. So for our daughters now, we hold them high, we hold them tight, and you'll never fall. You'll never fall because we're standing here and we're strengthened by the memory of our mothers who hold us. I sent her a text on her birthday. Um, I said uh, I couldn't imagine doing life without her. And I said, uh, you, you complete me. There are mothers here that have daughters and you'll know what I mean by that. I can't imagine my life without my daughter in it. Um, my mum, I am my mother's daughter, which is a blessing and a curse all in one. Um, my best friend, the whole world. <laughs> She's my favourite person besides Nana. Both of my parents um, passed away in 2010 and these are always the days that are hard, so happy and joyous and just so sad that they're not physically here. But as we go through life, not only do you realise uh, how many moments your own parents miss, um, there's also a mortality and a realisation that one day my own children, my own daughter is going to hurt as much as I do on these occasions, but also hopefully be grateful. <laughs> hopefully she will feel grateful that I was her mum and that Nana was her Nana because she was very close to her. I remember when I got my malu done, um, Suruapi said to me, I'm going to do a really special malu for you because you are going to go on and do great things for our people. And I think that was kind of a defining moment for me that that was uh, very much a part of the reason why I wanted to do it, that I wanted to carry those markings to remind me what gifts I'd been given and the responsibility to use them. And I'd like to think that I've used them well, or as well as I could. Well, hey, I'm going to report to you, the Ministry of Course, now resume. Please be seated.